what my goal has been and what it continues to be is to kind of bring this, uh, just like you said, bring this performance marketing uh, uh, <clears throat> mindset to to big brands. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. Uh, and, uh, you know, whether it be getting people to sign up for their newsletter or tracking store visits, how many people are going in and buying whatever from their store or, uh, you know, whatever it is, uh, getting people to watch a video for Christ's sake, like so- something small, that's okay, a newsletter, whatever, something small, but, but making some sort of goal to prove that you can do it better uh, than other people. Um, because a lot of them, sometimes when they do use metrics to measure their performance, they're using usually CPM. Yeah. It's usually just like, how much did we spend and what was the CPM? Um, but what people don't realize about that is that a lot of times the higher quality users cost more, so they have a higher CPM. But that doesn't mean that 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 could mean you you reached your target and you didn't like if you have too low of a CPM, you just got like bottom of the barrel traffic, uh, and uh, and you didn't necessarily meet your demographic or uh, your, your demographic didn't actually see your ads necessarily. So um, so using, even using that as a metric is a terrible metric. <laughs> And welcome to The Robust Marketer. I'm Eric Dick, host of the podcast. Today, we have one of the true legends in the space. We have Tim Bird. Now, Tim Bird, uh, besides being a super successful Facebook marketer, uh, own, owner of the Y Agency, uh, he is also the founder of the world's biggest Facebook group, this the world's biggest Facebook ad buyers group. And basically, this is a group that has just taken off over the last year. It is the place where you're going to find the best discussions online for Facebook advertisers of all levels, super advanced people, people just figuring out for small, me, small and medium businesses. It's amazing the way it's grown. Uh, I've known Tim uh, since I started this job. We've been talking, but this is actually the first time we've talked sort of face to face, as they say. Uh, welcome to the podcast today. How are you doing, Tim? Oh, well, thank you for having me, Eric. I appreciate it. Yeah, nice. So uh, you're calling from San Diego? I'm actually in Orange County, like Newport Beach area. Oh, lovely. But close, yeah. Nice. Okay, so to start the podcast off, I think people, it's funny, people know you as an expert. They know your group, obviously. And I'm sure a lot of people who've been to your masterminds maybe know a little bit more. But tell us a little bit about your journey and sort of what brought you to where you are and uh, and what it's like where you're sitting. Yeah, Great question. Uh, so, okay, so uh, I've been doing internet advertising now for about 12 years. Um, I started when I was 18 or so, 19, uh, and uh, I, was, I was actually an affiliate for, for three days, um, and it was back in the uh, adult uh, webmaster days before mainstream. There was only Commission Junction. There wasn't even affiliate networks at the time. Uh, so I was a, 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 a affiliate for uh, a webcam site, actually, uh, for three days. Um, three days, and then I did so. I did very well. So the affiliate manager uh, called me and said, "Hey, can you teach other people uh, how to do whatever you're doing?" Um, and I was just like automating Craigslist posting at the time, um, completely white hat at the time, whatever, right? Um, this is 12 years ago now, uh, and uh, uh, so I, I didn't even know what an affiliate manager was. I didn't really know what an affiliate program was. He just said, "Hey, if you get, you know, anybody uh, that you teach how to do this." They'll get their twenty dollars a sale, and you get five dollars a sale for every sale they make. And I was like, awesome! You know, we can scale this. Um, so then we started. We made a little. Uh, me and my brother were doing it. My little brother, uh, Andrew Bird, uh, and uh, we did. So we did a little like word guide. It was like a few pages that taught you like you know how to make a link code and like all these like really basic things. Uh, and then we would like uh, post job ads on Craigslist uh, to get people to like sign up and like do this online job. Uh, anyway, one thing led to another. I uh, ended up getting another five dollars a sale. Then became official affiliate managers. Uh, then got a white label. Uh, then uh, uh, then decided to start our own campsite. Actually, um, then uh, with processing issues and whatnot, we moved into dating. Uh, and then once uh, visa cross sell regulations changed uh, about seven years ago now, um, and uh, kind of killed the monetization. Uh, you, you basically couldn't have a little checkbox at the bottom and automatically bill somebody for like a different third-party site. Okay. Um, uh, so once they took that out, the whole industry changed. So I jumped out and headed to mainstream. Um, and uh, uh, since then, it's been, uh, uh, since then it's been, uh, I've done affiliate networks, I've owned Garcinia offers, uh, ad platforms, I built my own, like 50 on Red or Traffic Van, similar to that. Cool. Uh, penny auction sites, uh, lead gen offers, uh, e-com sites, kind of you name it. I've tried a lot of things and uh, kind of just go, you know, I throw a lot of darts at the board and I see what sticks. 
Nice. Are you technical? Are you so you, when you're pro, when you're hacking these problems? Are you are you doing the coding? Are you are you technical at all? Or do you do you off uh, I, uh, I do have uh, very talented programmers, thankfully. And uh, if I didn't, I probably wouldn't be uh, where I'm at now. But um, so anybody listening, uh, it's very important that you find good technical people. Um, now, one thing I have been blessed is that uh, when I was I, I was my school's webmaster when I was 13. Um, so I know some HTML, and then I learned some uh, some PHP, a little bit of Python. Um, so I know just enough to to really lead a development team properly and not get uh, thrown for a loop or, hey, it's going to take a week to do this feature. It's like, no, that's an hour long job, man. You know, yeah. like, come on. <laughs> um, so I, I know just enough to like not get caught into those problems. Okay. What was your first big win in the Facebook? So do you remember what, like when you, when you first uh, really jumped onto Facebook? What was your first yes. like true big win? So it's funny, when I first jumped onto Facebook, uh, uh, there was no newsfeed ads. It was only right-hand side. That was it. Uh, and uh, there was only campaigns and ads. Uh, there was no ad set, so they added like a whole other layer there. Uh, but uh, I do remember, actually. So it was uh, my business partner, uh, Sean Brown. Um, he went to a meeting in Texas, actually, uh, with a law firm. Uh, I forgot. Uh, I think it was – can't remember the name at the top of my head, but – um, I went to a meeting with a social security firm, a uh, disability firm in uh, in Texas, kind of as a favor to his friend. He didn't really want to go. Uh, he was like falling asleep in their marketing meeting uh, and uh, but just was hearing enough uh, to where at the end of it, he was like, you guys are doing this all wrong. <laughs> uh, like you need to stop doing billboards and stop doing like bus stop ads. Like you guys are like throwing money away. And they're like, OK, like how would you recommend? He's like, well, let's do Facebook ads. So then uh, he sells them on it, kind of negotiates like a, a price per lead at twenty five dollars, I remember, uh, and uh, uh, and then leaves the meeting, calls me, says, "Hey Tim, can we do social security leads?" Uh, I'm like, uh, "I've never even heard of that before. What is it?" You know, um, and it's basically just people that uh, you know can't work, they're disabled, and they need money help from the government more or less um, because they're injured. Uh, but uh, I looked on OfferVault, which I don't know if people still use OfferVault or not, but um, it tells people you know, what affiliate prices are out there basically um, for certain offers. And I saw that the highest one was $12. So I'm like, okay, $25 is fair. Uh, that's double the market rate. Like, I think we can make this work. So we, start, we, we put our heads together. We jump on Facebook ads. Um, I'm a little more technical than he is, so he's more a little you know, helping with ad creative and kind of that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, so the first day we tank, it was terrible, losing so much money. Uh, day two, same thing, really bad. We're like, oh, this is not going to be good. We're going to lose a lot of money fulfilling our first order here. <laughs> but day three, day three, I don't know if it, I don't remember if it was a new ad copy or maybe a new targeting or something we tried just like took off. Uh, and we we're getting leads for like four dollars um, and selling them for twenty five. So we're doing like over five hundred percent ROI, all clean, white hat, legion. You know, very clean. Um, but we ended up capping out the law firm um, their entire month. We capped them out in two days. Um, so we're like, hey, we need to go find more law firms to buy these leads because they don't have the capacity. They need to build another call center. Um, so then that's how that business was born. Actually, we started uh, calling law firms and selling them leads and, you know, started our own lead gen offer, basically. Very cool. And those leads generally, I'm just out of curiosity, I know it was a long time ago in early days, but how did those leads end up backing out for like for the oh, law firms great. in general? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. I mean, uh, Facebook leads in general, a lot of uh, companies have this stigma that they're like low quality leads or something, but that is completely dependent upon uh, the ad copy used, the imagery, et cetera. Um, uh, F Facebook usually comes in uh, uh, just below Google AdWords, okay. um, quality-wise, but but cost-wise, it's usually significantly cheaper. Especially at um, that time, early on in Facebook's days, because that was during also oh, during yeah. the period when like l like law um, keywords could be. I remember mesoth mesothelomia mm -hmm. or mesothelioma or whatever. Yep. That keyword was like a hundred bucks on on Google and Yahoo yep. at the time. Uh, which is interesting. yeah, I was getting. I actually ran a lead gen for that on Facebook, and I was getting leads in for about 150 bucks a lead wow. on mesothelioma. Which yeah, the the leads are worth like a thousand to two thousand because because a click is usually like a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it's 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 honestly really crazy uh, how it uh, how it all turned out. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, fa Facebook is really it's it's honestly evolved uh, massively over the years. Um, as have its policies and whatnot, and, and the, the strategies you need to use when it was just right-hand side ads, it was so much easier but harder, you know, at the same time, so. 
yeah, a lot less variables that went into it. So that was uh, essentially the beginning of your agency, right? Which is called the Y. What's called Y agency? Agency Y. Agency uh, Y. Yeah, just agency with a, a two Y's. Uh, but uh, uh, that that actually was no. That was agency Y I didn't start until uh, until January first of this year. So okay. it's only one year old. Um, uh, prior to that, um, I had a few affiliate networks. Uh, Plus was one of them. I don't know if people might have heard yeah, of Plus.com. Plus, yeah. Um, so that was my network, uh, and then uh, I trained. So then I shut the network down on December 31st. I don't know, four or five years ago, whatever, six years ago, whatever it was. Uh, and uh, and I was like, screw this. I'm sick of running a network. Um, you know, I was making okay money, but not enough for the headache, honestly. Um, so I just literally just paid everybody, shut it down, and then just rebranded that company as Legal Lead Gen, uh, doing uh, Social Security leads and mesothelioma and things like that. Uh, and then uh, and then after about a year and a half, uh, we sold that company to that. To, uh, to a law firm, actually, uh, and then uh, ended up uh, then starting a mass tort lead gen agency, oh. uh, which was Digitize IQ, and that's where we're doing, uh, you know, transvaginal mesh and Zeralto and IVC and Invocana and all, it's all the medical class action lawsuit leads, okay. uh, still for attorneys. Um, and then uh, and then after selling that company a couple of years ago, I, I did nothing for honestly like a year. Um, I, I piddled around in some random little businesses, to, you know, messed around with drop shipping on e-com just to kind of get a feel for it. Um, but I didn't really like know what I wanted to do um, until uh, until uh, beginning of this year. I decided to start an agency just because from the ad buyer group, which I started about six years ago now, people have been asking me for years, you know, hey, can you run my budget for me? Can you run our you know our company's budget? We'd really love for you to handle our ad spend. Uh, and just it just wasn't my business model for for six years. So I decided to make it my business model. Nice. OK, so let's talk about the group here. I didn't actually realize that it was six years old. Like. It's, it's, uh, that's one of those things it's like the overnight success that happens over a decade. Yeah, right? Right. Like, People keep, everybody thinks that too. It's funny. That is because it, it just came on my radar this year when I kind of got into this position. And it's just like I'm part of a lot of these different communities and a lot of them are excellent. But this this has got to be the best. This is the best one I think in the space right now. Just the the amount of, of people that chime in there, the the goodwill that everyone seems to have. And like I say, the levels like there are there are people who are have small and medium businesses that are just that are you you know leveraging this leveraging the facebook knowledge to really accelerate their businesses but there's also super high level people on there as well tell us a little bit about why you started it and sort of how it it's grown and and, uh, and what are some of the landmarks that you've hit that that you're proud of for that group Okay. Yeah. Good, great question. Uh, so, uh, so I started about six years ago, and it was actually uh, right when we started the social security company. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I was looking online, and I, I wanted a place to talk about Facebook ads because I was running the ads at the time. I didn't have media buyers, you know. Um, so at the time, I was running the ads, and uh, uh, and I was like, I really like, I'd really like a place to talk about Facebook ads with people. <laughs> you know, like, is that too much to ask? So of course, I'm on Facebook looking for a group on Facebook about Facebook advertising. Uh, and uh, there wasn't really anything out there. And the, the, maybe there was maybe one or two, and they were just terrible. It was you know, all very low quality people um, that weren't spending any real money. Uh, and then there was you know, some of the affiliate groups, which is fine, but, uh, but that wasn't Facebook advertising. There was all a lot of affiliate offers and stuff like that. So, so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start a group. Um, and uh, so I started it. I didn't like invite anybody to it. I just, uh, you know, as I was uh, talking to people in Skype groups and stuff, I just dropped the link and said, hey, if you want to join, you know. But I didn't go in and invite like a thousand people, all my friends, you know, like most people do when they start a group. Um, so I really let it grow organically. And it, it probably took a year to get it to even a thousand people. Um, uh, but it was the right people. Um, and I made sure to like really impress, like, I, I spent a lot of my time in there for years now helping people because if no one and if someone has a question and no one helps them then uh, then no one's ever gonna come back to that group mm -hmm. um, so basically I was the one answering questions for years the only one for the most part for the couple of years and then people then other people those would see that I was more willing to answer their question if they helped other people um, so basically I made it like you know the more helpful you are the more helpful I'll be to you Very cool. Um, so I made it kind of win-win, and then uh, so it took about a year to get to a thousand people. It took about three years to get to five thousand. Um, again, just straight organically, um, you know, people inviting their friends, whatever. Uh, and uh, and I started throwing events, um, and uh, uh, you know, ad buyer events or meetups or whatever you want to call it, uh, and uh, and that helped a lot. And I, there's I think there's a lot of high-level people in there because I've done so many things in this industry that I know all the top like processors, affiliate networks affiliates, uh, advertisers across 
adult and mainstream. Um, so I know kind of a lot of the key players in the industry, which, so they all kind of jump in there and chime in now and then. Yep. Um, and that's one of the things that's helped to become a really, really great community. And, and then a big thing was kicking out all the trolls. Um, honestly, uh, uh, we, I was stuck around, I don't know, it was around 10,000 users. So it was like at 5,000 users around three years, four years, it got to like 10. So, like, okay, it's good. But, uh, yeah, double is really good. Uh, but then, uh, but then I, I I felt it like I was losing. I have like Gritics, which like tracks like how many members you have and how many you lose and all that. Um, and uh, and I was seeing that like it was like kind of plateauing a little bit. Um, and uh, so that's when I had to really make an effort and kick out a lot of my friends, uh, which were a lot of the trolls in the group that would hate on newbies or uh, you know just just cause trouble. You know, yeah. tro like trolls do, right? Uh, and uh, and I noticed that as soon as I kicked all those trolls out, boom, growth just like skyrocketed. Uh, because there was a ton of people in there that were like scared to ask questions or to comment because they didn't want to get ripped apart by trolls. Um, so as soon as I got rid of those people, boom, it just really took off from there. Um, I think they, you know, the next year after that, it doubled again, uh, and then uh, and then almost doubled again here in the last year. So um, actually more than doubled again. So it's just it's growing out very quickly at this point. What do you put it at now? Uh, it's about fifty three thousand people right now. That's unbelievable. Like. And that's and that's still it's it's it just shows you how fertile this market is, right? Like as more and more people become more, well, more aware of the power of Facebook market, there's five what? million there's five million Facebook advertisers. That's insane. Well, that's including all the cloaked accounts and whatnot. So maybe yeah. there's a million people, right? But like uh, that's still a lot of advertisers. So I still got a lot a lot of ways to go here. <laughs> yeah, and I, I like your point about about having to kick out the. You know, I'm I'm part of a few uh, Skype groups, for instance, that are mostly mm -hmm. affiliates, and those things are just the darkest. You yeah. know, they're just they're just super dark. They're vicious. They're they're jump on. You know, if someone comes on there who's a newbie, they do get ripped apart. Oh my god! And yeah. your group is like the opposite of that, and it's it's just like it's it's genuine and it's warm and it's like it, it's really a cool thing to be a part of. I'll tell you, it took a long time to get it that way. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, again, it didn't a... happen overnight. Uh, there's uh, about 8,000 people banned from the group right now. That's unreal. And again, then that started by your effort to really grow it organically, I'm sure, and make sure you start with the right people, get the nucleus going. Uh, and then having all these thought leaders jump on there. I see James Van Ellswick jumping on there like mm -hmm. all the time. He's, he's, a, he's a great Yeah, great, great guy. Very, very, very smart guy. He An really understands. And... Uh, Jason, yeah, smart. Yeah, there's a lot of really smart people in the industry, and, and they don't like – going in groups. I mean, they like groups, but they don't like going in these ones where it's just spam or, yeah. you know, trolls or whatever. They, they like high level stuff. They like, you know, interesting stuff. So, uh, yeah, they, they've really taken interest in it, which I really appreciate that they take the time out of their day to do that. Nice. Let's talk a little bit more about your agency. So, uh, you've, you're, I know you're, you're tied with DFO a little bit on the group. I know that they sort of, they help with some of your events and your meetups. Yeah, we do some event planning together, yeah. But talk about what are your goals for the agent, if you, for your agency in the coming years. I'm super interested in, and I, I talk about this all the time, but it's like, it's this performance marketing mindset that we're bringing to the table that we learned as affiliates, essentially, and how it's becoming super applicable to the rest of the world. Uh, when, you know, when applied in these white hat common sense ways to the to the big brands of the world. So I'm curious, what what's your like, what's your goal with your agency? So yeah, this is the first time I haven't really publicly announced yet, but I'll announce it right now that uh, DFO or Direct Focus Online and Agency Y, uh, my agency, are doing a merger, uh, and uh, uh, Agency Y is going to be the uh, the client facing uh, external agency for clients. Um, and then uh, DFO has also their internal media buying team, which I'm going to uh, help oversee along with uh, uh, their CMO, Alex, who's a very brilliant, brilliant guy. Um, so, uh, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, and uh, uh, But where I see, I guess, the agency going um, and what my goal was when I started it uh, was exactly like you just said, that, uh, uh, that big brands pretty much don't have this performance uh, mindset. Um, and it's funny, actually, one of the media buyers that I, I hired about a year ago now, um, uh, he didn't want to move down to San Diego with DFO, so he works for a different company now in, in Orange County here. But um, but he uh, he was do, he did the Apple uh, iPhone 7 launch, okay. actually. Um, so he worked, you know, big, big brand, uh, you know, uh, et cetera. And he told me when he came on, he's like, he's like, my goal was to spend fifty to seventy five thousand dollars a day. That was the goal. There wasn't like a CPM goal or can you get people to sign up for our newsletter or watch a video? It was yeah. literally just, can you spend the money? Um, that was the goal. 
And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, there's really, that was it, you know? Like, I can do that. The easiest thing <laughs> in the world. Yeah, I can do that. that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, so when he came on, I had to teach him all these, you know, direct response kind of style stuff. And uh, it was kind of blew his mind a little bit that people like even know about that kind of stuff. So what my goal has been and what it continues to be is to kind of bring this, uh, just like you said, bring this performance marketing uh, uh, <clears throat> mindset to to big brands, <coughs> pardon me, All right. uh, and uh, you know whether it be getting people to sign up for their newsletter or tracking store visits, how many people are going in and buying whatever from their store, or uh, you know whatever it is, uh, getting people to watch a video for Christ's sake, like so- something small. That's okay, a newsletter, whatever, something small, but but making some sort of goal to prove that you can do it better uh, than other people. Um, because a lot of them sometimes when they do use metrics to measure their performance, they're using usually CPM. Yeah, it's usually just like how much did we spend and what was the CPM. Um, but what people don't realize about that is that a lot of times the higher quality users cost more, so they have a higher CPM. But that doesn't mean that 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 could mean you you reached your target and you didn't like if you have too low of a CPM, you just got like bottom of the barrel traffic. Uh, and uh, and you didn't necessarily meet your demographic, or uh, your, your demographic didn't actually see your ads necessarily. So, um, so use, even using that as a metric is a terrible metric. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, just just basically trying to merge performance uh, with these big brands is kind of the goal. But it, I'll tell you, it's been tough. They they're very set in their ways. Mm-hmm. I'm finding this as well, and it, it like. It, it's this mindset of, that comes from print and TV. I think like I, I'm working with a with a client on the on the side right now that's that has these ideas about who their audience is. And they're like, we want you to advertise in these segments and these static segments. I'm like, that's not, that's not the way you should approach Facebook necessarily. Right? Like Facebook they're not data driven. Yeah. yeah. You have to, you have to cast a wider net. And as you say, you know, the, you know, I was just building this into the proposal, but like these actions, they're not, ju- they're there to prove uh, that, that you can do it better and that you can get these, you can get the desired response from someone, but they're also, they also feed the algorithm, right? They, they also go back in so that when someone does this, you know, they're more likely to be a consumer essentially. And you can constantly, constantly ref- like, it, it's interesting because you can, you refine and broaden your audience using that kind of methodology, which is sort of an oxymoron, but it's, it's the way to like, it's the way lookalikes work. Oh no, totally, and uh, and it's funny because these uh, all the big agencies uh, they don't want to they don't want their clients to think like this, you know. They don't want them to look at performance because then they actually have to like really put effort in. Um, uh, you know, they're more focused on just building good creatives, yeah. good videos. Well, uh, and good just, creatives hey, too, right? Like it, right. good creatives that tell the story that that have this sort of like beautiful sheen, but maybe they don't perform, uh, you know, as 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 we would know. As long as they spend money, they're performing, right? I guess so. In that, with those <laughs> metrics, yeah. Uh, but I, I feel like it's changing. It's funny to see companies like DFO as well, who have a traditional affiliate background, uh, you know, merging with you in this way. Uh, it's a really smart move on their part, I think, too, right? Because it, it, it you both get a lot out of it. You know, you get uh, the, the, the backing, potentially the capital or whatever. I don't know how your deal works necessarily of, of this big There's manpower. Company. Yeah, manpower exactly, and then and and they and they get access. to This group is I could see be, being such a valuable tool for your agency in the long run as it grows. Yeah, it absolutely is, and uh, so we're going to do a lot more work, a lot more closely together on a lot of things. Um, a lot of people don't know this actually. DFO has about 150 employees in uh, eight offices around the world. Huge. Um, so they're a lot. Yeah, they stayed under the radar for many many years now. So people don't really know how big they are, but it's uh, it's interesting. They 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 do a really good job. They have in-house video team, which would be really useful to agency clients, uh, you know, in-house fulfillment, uh, their own CRM, so many useful things that we can use for clients. Um, and then, uh, then there's a lot we can do in the event planning stuff as well, which we'd like to work more closely with you guys on as well too. Yeah. I think there, you know, there's lots of ways that we're going to find to be able to work together. I'm super excited, um, for Bruce Kranz talk at Facebook mastery live. Actually, he's, you know, such a, such an, again, under the radar industry legend. And this is his, mm-hmm. his one of his first big talks. He was super excited about giving it. And uh, yeah, we're super excited to have him on. I'm, uh, it, it's going to be a really fun event. Let's talk for a minute about Facebook Mastery Live. We, Let's do it, yeah. You know, we, we've we announced it, but but I, I reached out to Tim a month or so ago and asked him to come talk at Facebook Mastery Live, and he's in. Super excited. Have you been to Bangkok before? Uh, I have been to Bangkok, and I love Thailand, um, especially nice. Phuket. But Bangkok is, it's it's crazy. The first, I was only there, I've only been there one time, uh, but uh, but it's like, it looked like New York to me, kind of um, like so many tall buildings, so many so 
condensed. I absolutely love it. Though. I love Bangkok. What I'm I really love, excited to go. What I love about it is the the energy. That first of all, it's just been a, mm-hmm. personally, it's been a magical place for me. I met my wife there right out of university when I was teaching kindergarten over there. Oh, really? That's it, awesome. Yeah, I went. I I, wrote, I had a film degree. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I I, <laughs> I I answered an online ad basically for teachers, and I, I ended up being a kindergarten teacher at a private school in Bangkok where they were like, you will use your professional training to create a curriculum. And I'm like, I can dissect Terminator <laughs> 2 and tell you all the time travel theories in it. Uh, but, uh, but no, it's this magical place. It changed my life then. That's why I moved out west from, from out east, which is where I'm from. And then years later, I went back there a number of times uh, and spoke at these conferences with iStack. And that's where they ended up recruiting me and bringing me onto this job. Ah, so, interesting. Okay. Uh, you, you know, I keep saying Bangkok has this magical power in my life. And, uh, and, and I'm super, <laughs> super excited to go back. And Phuket as well. Uh, it was an international ball hockey tournament in Phuket, which was uh, a lot of fun. But I think this year is going to be cool. even more fun. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you're going to be talking? I know you don't want to give too much away, but let's talk a little bit about what you're going to be talking about at Facebook Mastery Live on December 8th in Bangkok. Yeah, absolutely. So at Facebook Mastery Live, uh, I'm going to be uh, giving out some of the stuff that I usually only give out of my paid masterminds, um, which is, uh, I'd say, some of the, the best stuff also. It's not even just like little crumbs. Um, it's, uh, it's how to scale. Um, most people have this like, oh, scale 10 to 20% every couple of days, kind of BS. <laughs> uh, and there is, it does work sometimes, but that's really like, eh. Um, there's way better ways to scale, um, much quicker, uh, with uh, much less volatility. And then there's uh, ways to account for the volatility on Facebook where you see, you know, one ad set does great today, then terrible tomorrow, then okay the next day. And, you know, it's kind of all over the place. So um, I teach also how to uh, to uh, get rid of that volatility for the most part. Um, and then uh, and then also automate all of this so you can actually live the dream and go sit in Phuket all day and drink uh, pina coladas, you know? Nice. Uh, uh, I am super looking forward to that. That is uh, going to be really cool. So the, the event itself, you know, we're, and then we're going to be having dinner afterwards. We'll have some drinks. Uh, and then it's going to be fantastic. Are you going to STM Island or is that when your mastermind is in Phuket? Uh, my mastermind is right after uh, Facebook Mastery. So I think it's during STM Island. Okay. Um, and then uh, and then I think you guys are also, I'm doing like a like a private villa retreat yep. in Phuket, a rented 80-foot yacht. Oh, it's going to be a great time. Amazing. Um, and I think you guys are doing something similar, yeah? Yeah, we're doing something similar. We have the Facebook uh, Elite Retreat. I think we're not, I'm sure FB Queen is doing one as well, right? Like I'm sure there's a, I don't know, yeah. a lot of people <laughs> down there doing it. But it's, it's like we should get together like we should have a we should like at one of the nights we should have a let's party do a group, or something group to, yeah i'm only gonna have like 10 or 12 people there i'm yeah. doing like a smaller one so let's do yeah let's do a little party or uh, or something because yeah that we're gonna all we'll be in phuket why not you know that's a damn good idea okay cool let's yeah. talk about that after yeah um okay <laughs> talk let's talk a bit more about your mastermind so you do uh how many masterminds do you do a year it's a good question um so i've been kind of messing with that a little bit and trying different things but um i'm going to probably stick to doing a uh, two in europe every year two in asia and two in america and then i'll do a couple supplementary ones like maybe australia or dubai or latin america or something because i get a lot of requests from those areas that i haven't done any yet so um so yeah like six to eight a year basically Very cool and i gotta say you know we did this application process for our facebook elite retreat and one of the questions was have you been to a mastermind before and which one uh, and a good number of them had been to your masterminds. And, uh, you know, and the next question was like, did you like it or didn't you? What did you like about it? Like everyone comes away saying good things a- about your masterminds. And I think it's part of the, the good spirit that you bring to everything. And it's obviously the validity of your knowledge as well. Um, but what do you, what do you like, what do people get out of your masterminds? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so most people, when they come, it's funny. Most people, uh, they, they come and they think it's going to be like, oh, how to make a lookalike and like how to make an ad and like real, they think it's going to be like newbie basic stuff because that's what most of the events are. That's what most of them are catered to is for newbies because that is the bulk of the market, right? Mm-hmm. Ultimately. Um, and so, but the, but the people that I'm trying to cater to are the, you know, intermediate advanced that are already spending hundreds or ideally thousands of dollars a day where just a couple little small things and, and then boom, they've, uh, you know, they'll, they'll double their ROI or whatever. And that is the average result of someone actually that comes to one of my events that they double their ROI in the first week. Wow. Um, I've had multiple people actually make their entire money back and I usually charge like six to seven, 7,500, somewhere in that range. But I've had uh, multiple people make their money back the first night before day two started, literally in just that amount of time because of one thing from day one. Amazing. Um, so we go over like advanced server optimization, advanced landing page optimization, multivariate testing, uh, and then obviously like all the advanced uh, Facebook stuff. Um, but it's it's very analytical. It's very actionable. I don't upsell anything. 
um, and uh, uh, and I and I, I undercharge for it a little bit. Um, I, I know a lot of uh, you know some of the other industry leaders, experts, whatever you want to call them. Um, they do masterminds and whatnot also, but they'll charge you know fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and that's fine. But uh, but if you you know if I go to an event and and I leave and I say okay, I paid fifteen grand, that was worth fifteen. I'm happy, right? I'm not going to be, I'm not ecstatic though. I'm not going to be like telling all my friends how great of a deal I got. Yeah. Uh, now if I pay, you know, six grand, but I feel like it was worth 20, I feel like I got a great deal. Uh, and I'm going to tell a lot of people about it. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of how I like to approach mine and it gives me a good excuse to travel. Honestly, I didn't for like the last 10 years, I like never traveled. I was always at home working. I can't, you know, I got to stay home and work. Uh, but now since I, 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 you know, I, I make it my, I make it work to, to go travel. So, uh, it's it's good networking also. I, I I actually have a lot of fun. I get to meet a lot of these people from the ad buyer group that I've never met before, which is cool too. And it's that's I was talking about this with a friend who's in another industry, and I was talking about you know the daily interactions I have on your group and on like Nick Peroni's group or uh, any of these other groups that are out there, and like the community that we're sort of contemporaries with is such a a thing that you, it's easy to overlook how awesome it is. But the fact mm-hmm. that we can travel around the world and we're gonna go have drinks with you know like. 3,000 like-minded people or whatever. Like it, and it's, we're all totally decentralized. We're all around the world. Uh, it truly, truly globalized, but we're all kind of coming from the same place in so many ways. In, in a lot of ways around obviously wanting to make money online, wanting to master certain skills, but also being like, uh, you know, young and entrepreneurial focused and, and really sort of kind of outside the box thinkers, I guess, a little bit. Like oh, people totally, who, are, yeah. who are not necessarily looking for that, the corporate grind essentially. Oh no, it's crazy. I, I I like take it for granted, kind of, that uh, I can go to like any decent sized city in the world, look up my friend list or anybody in the group, and see some people that are from you know Serbia or Iceland yeah. or Sydney or whatever Lebanon or uh, yeah, and and go grab a drink with somebody, um, you know, uh, and they'd buy uh, really you a t- drink too. And, and, and all yeah, yeah, they would buy me a drink. Too, right? <laughs> I buy them a drink though. Yeah, um, sure. but uh, uh, but yeah, I really take that for granted. So when I when I'll travel with a you know a, a girlfriend or I'm single at the moment, but I travel with a girlfriend or something though, uh, uh, I'd be like, hey, we're gonna meet up with my friends in London, and then we're like, hey, we're stopping in Paris, and meeting up with my friend, whatever, and then in Amsterdam, we're gonna have dinner with my friend. They're like, what do you do? Like, how do you have all these friends all over the world? <laughs> I'm like, well, I've never met them. I've never met them, but yeah. he's really cool. I met him once, you know. <laughs> Um, but it's like, yeah, it's like this big online community where you can talk to someone for like years on Facebook messenger or Skype or whatever. You kind of feel like you know them and then you like meet them and it's really, you know, it's really fun, but we get, we, I feel like we maybe do take it for granted and it's pretty awesome, honestly. <laughs> yeah. And, and those who want to come to, to experience it in Bangkok and Phuket, make sure you do Cause it's, a, this is a very special show. Berlin is great too. Uh, but, oh, but Bangkok's my favorite. But Bangkok's yeah, Bangkok my favorite. is the best. Yeah. It is, it, for anybody, just... yeah, any of you guys on the fence about coming out to AWA or Facebook Master or anything like this, uh, you got to come. This is where you you can you can do online seminars and courses, and that's not bad as a secondary. Uh, but networking, networking's where yeah. I mean, what, what did it say? Your 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 uh, your net worth is your network, or your network is your net worth. That's what it is, I think. Um, but uh, but networking's where I'd say things truly change for you, especially if you're newer to the affiliate industry, or even if you're not, you can meet just one person and that can change the entire, uh, the entire trajectory of your career. Uh, you can literally get one deal that just changes everything. And I'm telling you, it's at these parties. It's where the drinks are flowing. Uh, it's in the lounges at AWA when there's just, you're just sitting around and there's just killing time. That's when these deals happen. They don't happen on Skype. I mean, a little bit, okay. Yeah. A little bit on Skype. But they really happen in person when you don't have to worry about, you know, pe- the NSA recording you or <laughs> uh, or, uh, you know, anybody else in the group seeing or, uh, you know, just when you can see someone face to face is like when the magic happens. So um, if for no other reason other than the networking, you guys should totally come out. Yeah. And then- plus it'll be a, there's a lot of great parties and an awesome time. So. Yeah. Yeah. OK, good. That Well, the cell the cell is complete. I'm sure any last fence sitters will be eradicated here. And honestly, Facebook Mastery Live, we just took a look at the numbers and we're up over 230 now. So we, there's, nice. there's less than 100 tickets available. There's only 350 nah, tickets. You guys better get them quick. Yeah. They're, like I think AWA will keep selling because it's just a big it's a big venue. that And, and it's I think it's going to be over over like high 2000s or, or maybe even into 3000 people at this one. Uh, but, but yeah, this one's going to sell out. It's a closed event. Basically you get in, you're going to get dinner, you're going to get to talk to Tim after it's going to be, a, we're going to have drinks on stage. It's going to be, 
a uproariously fun time. So make sure everyone comes and checks it out. Yeah. I had one other question that I, this is yeah. a this is a throwback to something you said earlier that I wrote down that I thought was interesting because it's something that that I have never done myself. I've I've worked. I've basically like since coming back from Thailand, I've worked in one capacity or another as an affiliate or, or at a company. I've never had a period where I didn't work. And you mentioned that you spent a year <laughs> dabbling. What was that year like for you? Oh my God. You know what? Honestly, it was kind of miserable. Um, uh, I was just testing a lot of things. So I tested a, I started like a little uh, PR company with my buddy. Uh, then with the same friend, actually, we started a social media management company where we just managed people's Facebooks and stuff. Uh, um, and it was just literally throwing darts at the board and kind of seeing what I th thought would be scalable. Uh, you know, where I, we looked at buying businesses, actually. We got lists from business brokers uh, and looked at buying a few businesses. Um, uh, for a while, I just traveled. Honestly, I didn't do yeah. much. Um, I looked at uh, building, building a couple apps. Uh, I mean, I literally did so much different, like so many different things uh, to just kind of see uh, what I wanted to do because um, I'd done so much and I, I just didn't know, honestly. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I had a couple good exits. Um, so I had some, you know, enough money to, to just relax for a year, essentially. Um, so, so I did. And it was honestly like one of the only breaks I've ever taken in my life like that. But it was it was really nice, but it, it got boring. I'll tell you that. Um, so I was really excited to get started back on something again um yeah uh, so yeah i if i had to do it again I, I probably would have taken a much shorter break i'll put it that way but a, but a break <laughs> yeah maybe and maybe your next break and what i hope to be able to do is because it sounds like you were searching during that period as well which can be a oh, stressful absolutely. feeling right when you're when you're throwing lines out there and seeing if something sticks like that can be kind of a bewildering and and stressful situation too but like if i want i'd like to take some time off and like just totally snooze like just I don't, I don't know if I'm going to, but but spend no, you more can, time you with my can, daughter. I'm telling you, after here. after a few weeks or even yeah, a couple months, you're I like, know. oh, what do I do now? Because I I don't know about you, but like I, and this is probably a bad thing, honestly. But I kind of like define myself by like what I do, um, I think a lot uh, of and do. you know, and it's not a great thing, honestly. I know that, but that's just kind of how I am. Uh, and uh, so when I'm doing nothing, though, I don't feel good about it. Yeah, uh, I'm like, what am I doing? You know, yeah. like. Uh, uh, but I'm weird. Like I won't run other. I don't like running other people's offers. So like this whole time, I was trying to figure out what offers I could start of my own that were good to fulfill, that were scalable, that was Facebook friendly. Uh, there's a lot of good businesses you can start that just Facebook though just doesn't like them. Yeah. Even though they're completely legitimate, white hat, you name it, they just don't like it. So, um, but yeah, you start you start getting down on yourself when you're not doing much. So yeah, try try to keep back. Don't snooze too much, Eric. <laughs> yeah, no, I won't. I won't. Uh, I, I think after my plan, we'll see if this, if this happens, but after Facebook elite retreat, like I'm going to try to take off some time in December and spend, spend some, uh, you know, and, until, until the new oh, yeah. year, basically Honestly, like Christmas and stuff. You yeah, might as well. But even the no, week before, I'm going to keep no take a couple weeks there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice. No, I'm the same way. Like in the evenings, uh, you know, I'll put on maybe put on a TV show or something like that. But I'm it, then I'm just drawn back to the laptop, and that's yeah. what I like to do. You know, so it's not it doesn't feel like working necessarily at that time. But uh, my family doesn't always feel the same, so they'll appreciate some <laughs> some some FaceTime with me. I think hopefully. Oh, totally. Nice. Okay, last question. Uh, I've seen some some pictures. I know you know. I know that you like travel. Uh, I know I've seen some pictures of you sitting in a Bentley, things like that. What what's a Tim Bird peak experience? Like what are you what are you after in the game besides winning? Like what do, what do you what what do you really take a lot of pleasure in in your life besides work? Helping people, actually. Um, I know that's like super cliche, but like during my affiliate network, um, I help tons of people. Uh, uh, even now, uh, you know, I meet somebody random and they, if I just can tell that they have it in them, I, I, I go the extra mile. And I just, uh, I actually, I just, uh, the other day, I just, I've, I'm almost done with, I've been redoing my timber.com website. Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, and this perfect point is like illustrated actually on my little story on there. Um, but I'll just kind of tell it like a really quick version right here. Um, uh, it was when I had Plus, uh, uh, and we specialized in like adult dating offers, uh, hookup kind of like, like dating off, uh, CPA offers. Uh, and, uh, and this one affiliate came to me, uh, he was brand new. He'd never been an affiliate before. He was the first network he joined, uh, and, uh, he had no experience. Um, but, uh, but he was a hustler and he was willing to work hard and do whatever I told him to do. Um, and he was a drug dealer actually. Um, and he said, Hey, uh, you awesome. know, like I understand business. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, like teach me how to teach me how to do this. Uh, and I'll, I'll be loyal. Like, you know, you don't like, I got, you know, I'll do whatever you say. So, you know, Fast forward a few months, he's still not making much money, but like he's learning finally, right? 
but uh, you know, but then he's his little days will have message me on you know online and be like, uh, hey, you know, I feel like I, I just it's not working. I'm wasting all this money. Like I should just keep doing keep dealing the drugs, you know. And, and he had a little daughter, you know, two or three years old. I'm like, you can't tell your daughter you're a drug dealer. Like, you got to do something else, you know. Like, you wouldn't tell her this. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so that kind of kept him going. And then, you know, fast forward another few months. Now he's starting to make a few hundred bucks a day. So it's not replaced his drug dealing income yet. Uh, but, uh, but he's sitting, starting to see the light, right? So then, fast forward another few months, and now he's pulling down like a thousand dollars a day profit. Amazing. Um, so now he's finally able to kind of like quit the drug dealing. Um, and, uh, but throughout this time I had to like be his, his coach, his mentor, and just really just push him to keep going, honestly, cause he wanted to give up many times. Um, and then, uh, and then he ended up actually becoming one of the top affiliates in the world. And I don't want to like name his name, but, uh, uh, very smart guy. And honestly, he's helped uh, shape my career in a lot of ways also. Um, but I guess to, to really answer your question, um, it, it's helping people. And that's also why I started the Facebook group six years ago was just literally to help people and talk shop. And, uh, uh, I never expected it would actually like amount to like a lot or that it would actually make money in the end. I just, I never thought it would. Um, but, uh, but yeah, actually just helping people. Nice. And I, I buy it obviously from what you've, what you've built and, and how you are all the time in this group. Uh, that totally makes sense. That and driving Bentleys, right? <laughs> just one Bentley. <laughs> just, <laughs> just one Bentley. Okay, cool, man. I guess that's all you need. Uh, but people uh, go check out. So what, what's the, I, I, I'm blanking on the URL. Is it Facebook ad buyers? Uh, it's just a uh, facebook.com slash groups slash ad buyers slash ad buyers. If I'm mm-hmm. sure everyone on who listens to this podcast is on that group, uh, make sure you, you shout it out. Uh, and, and I guess we'll ho- hopefully we can post this, uh, this and, podcast and, on the group and at, yes, we will post this podcast for sure. Uh, and adleaks.com. It's like a news yeah. and tutorial site. So if you guys have any, uh, you know, a lot of the posts in the ad buyer group and these other groups, they disappear in a couple of days. You can't find them because they're so far down. So I take the best posts and I make them into articles and tutorials uh, about chatbots, uh, the algorithm. I mean, you name it. And then they're into like little tutorials and articles. You can find them. It's free. Uh, adleaks.com. Go check it out. It's a great resource. Yeah, I love Adleaks. I think it's – and it's such a good idea, obviously. Like, you have to – and I – you know, from an audience building perspective, it makes so much sense to have a place that's not owned by Facebook or YouTube or someone else uh, that, you can, that you can You're bring people me. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Exactly. I, I want, last question. Are there any posts yeah. in your mind that you've had over the past six years that really stick out to you as ones that you remember that you really like, that, that, that you really think fondly of? Like, what, are there ones where people have really been helped or ones, the one, you know, obviously the tan bros, when they, when they popped on there and showed their 400k a day or whatever, I mean, that's one that really sticks out in my mind. Uh, and that post you just did too, where you're just like, hey, everyone, run wild and tell me about you know your business. This is your one oppor- you're not supposed to plug in the group. Here's your one opportunity to plug. I think that post is still going. I think there's like it is. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'd say I don't know about six years. It's hard to pick pick my yeah. favorite, honestly. But in the last like few months, at least, uh, I'd say that those I've done that twice now, where I post and I let people you know sell themselves in the comments. Um, and I'm so strict about not letting people do that yeah. ever. Uh, that uh, I, I don't really know what a lot of people do in the group. You know, um, and I don't think a lot of other people know what they do either. Um, so when you can read through those and be like, oh, well, that person has that company. That's cool. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll hit them up, you know, or they do this or they do that or like, perfect. I was looking for a copywriter or, you know, whatever. It's been actually very, very cool. Um, so I'm trying to kind of expand on that and make that like sort of like a regular thing every couple of weeks or, you know, something where it's not annoying to people. But yeah. um, it's kind of hard to find a, a, a balance with it, but I'm, I'm working on it. But I, that's been my favorite one recently for sure. Yeah, it's funny. It's like the purge. Right, like you can't no violence in society ever. <laughs> yeah, you, except get, this you get one, one day, one night yeah, exactly, to, to purge yeah. it out. <laughs> exactly, and uh, and it worked. And like, yeah, the, I I would love to get a pixel on the amount of business that that post created. You know, Akatif was on there saying like, I got five you know referrals here from people I'm going to reach out to. I wonder uh, of the hundreds and hundreds of posts of people who who sold themselves a little bit there. Uh, I wonder how much business was generated from there. I bet a lot. I wish we could attribute that, but yeah, there's not not a tr- attribution for that yet. But hopefully one day. Nice. What's your relationship with Facebook like? They must love this group and what you're doing. Like, are, are you are you open? Are you, do you talk to them quite a bit, or what's your relationship? Uh, with Facebook yeah, like? uh, I talk to Facebook quite a bit actually. Various departments. Um, I do calls with a uh, uh, sometimes with the policy department, sometimes with the growth department. Uh, uh, sometimes with analytics and measurements or managed measurements and analytics, I think they call it. Um, but uh, uh, usually just to get extra feedback and then they want to know kind of what people are feeling in the community. 
uh, and uh, you know where people would like to go. And then it's interesting though. Uh, I had one guy tell me that um, I forgot what office it was at Traffic and Conversion Summit, like in March or whatever. But I was a Facebook employee, and he said that when he went through his like training, that in the class at Facebook, they actually recommended that they join the group to like read what people are doing on Facebook and to like kind of get trained uh, through the group, kind of. Um, so they like officially recommended it at Facebook. That's huge. Um, yeah, um, so I'm working on uh, just continuing to, to grow it and whatnot, and hopefully one day I'll get to meet Zuckerberg. You know, that'd be it's a kind of a dream of mine. I think I really look up to him, but um, but yeah, I do I do I do talk to Facebook a lot, um, but uh, and I get some special treatment, but I don't get as much special treatment as people probably think I get, or as you'd like, <laughs> as all of us, or would. as I would like. Yeah, yeah. So anybody from Facebook watching this, feel free hit me up. We'll work something out. You know. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, that's probably a good note to end on. It. If you want to find Tim. Uh, well, first of all, you're going to catch him in Bangkok on the Facebook Mastery Absolutely. Live. Absolutely, I'll see you guys all there. Uh, and then, otherwise, just get get on the group and uh, and and we'll let's start a mega thread on this post, and we'll uh, we'll we'll see if we can make it another favorite. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for coming on the podcast today, Tim. I, I appreciate it. I, I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person in Bangkok. You too, man. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate it. Cheers. All right, bye bye.